Let's go to our first caller, Paul Lane, on line one. How you doing, sir? Pete, how you doing this afternoon? Not bad at all. I figured you'd be knocking on doors all day today. I am indeed, sir. I'm up in CBS with Rex Hillier now. I just uh, came in for uh, came in out of the rain for a moment. I'm sitting in my vehicle here up in CBS and uh, thought I'd uh, give you a call. Good man. Let's... Yeah. Well, Pete, um, uh, what I wanted to talk about uh, was, uh, I guess, an extension of the conversation that we had last week uh, as it relates to, I guess, workers' compensation. Of course, when I called you last week, we were talking about the fact, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, it came to light, certainly with Ms. Manning's case, that we had 19 injured workers uh, that weren't, uh, that, you know, have been waiting an ordinance uh, period of time to have their cases heard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, and it leads you to wonder, well, that was one commissioner and there's more commissioners, so how many other workers uh, are in the same boat, which is, is a problem. And I guess it ties into the whole issue of, workers' compensation, the workers' compensation system in general, mm -hmm. and how it's working for employers and workers or, or, or not working. And certainly there's a statutory review which was done, and uh, we still haven't, uh, government still hasn't uh, released that, and we have no idea uh, when it plans on doing so and what changes or proposed changes are going to be brought forward. And uh, certainly I haven't heard a word from the Minister of service uh, NL uh, on any of these important issues, and I certainly mm -hmm. call upon him to come out and speak uh, to that. But A lot of people, uh, just before you go ahead, a lot of people dismiss the whole review process anyway and say they don't bother to show up anymore because essentially it's run by the people who are running the show anyway. It's not somebody from outside taking an objective look. It's people on the inside who are responsible for the program as it exists, listening to people and supposedly being objective enough themselves to uh, make recommendations that counter what they've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no doubt that even in that entire process itself that there's, uh, I think, definitely flaws and concerns there that people have raised and some legitimate ones. And I think we need to look at uh, how, how we do that in the future. But, uh, Pete, um, specifically what I wanted to speak to, and it is a workers' comp-related issue, this relates to, um, I was in Marystown um, a couple of weeks ago, I think maybe three weeks or, or, or so ago now, um, and I met with the um, um, some representatives there of families of uh, workers or former workers of the Marystown shipyard. And uh, they've had ongoing concerns, and they've been fighting with workers uh, with uh, the Workplace Health Safety Compensation Commission for quite some time now, I guess, over uh, having some sort of a, um, a, a, a proper look at um, all of the cases that have happened to former workers there. There's, there's numerous people who have worked over the years uh, at that facility, uh, and it's very questionable in terms of, uh, the things that those workers were exposed to, the types of controls and, and protection or lack thereof that was in place for them. And since that time, over years, we have this inordinate uh, number of cases of workers coming down with various types of cancers and so on that couldn't quite easily be linked, uh, you know, or I can't say quite easily, but certainly can be linked, uh, to the synergistic effects of uh, chemical exposures that would have taken place uh, at that facility over the years. And, you know, all these workers and the families are looking for is a fair hearing to have a fair process in place. Mm -hmm. And um, and there was actually a, a uh, physician from Ontario who came down uh, on his own accord um, and looked into this matter, and he was an occup he practiced occupational medicine. And uh, he has uh, made a number of links between uh, some of the cancers that have been experienced by these workers and the actual exposures, uh, you know, that, you know, certainly that they were exposed to. But unfortunately, because he doesn't practice medicine in Newfoundland and Labrador, his, I guess, uh, you know, they, they couldn't validate, I guess, his findings, um, because he's practicing, you know, in Ontario. And it's my understanding in Ontario that when you have these types of claims and so on, for industrial diseases, that they have a team in place that would adjudicate these claims. And these are people that, uh, you know, they're physicians who practice occupational medicine, mm -hmm. not like we have here in Newfoundland and Labrador where we just have general practitioners, but, uh, you know, specialists who specialize in industrial disease. They utilize industrial hygienists to, you know, to uh, investigate what workers were exposed to and, and so on. And then I guess in consultation with these physicians, they make 
you know, they look at, you know, are there links and are there legitimate claims here? Mm-hmm. We don't have that extensive process in place in Newfoundland and Labrador. We don't have those which resources is, here. Which is even more reason why we should avail of any expertise that we can get from elsewhere. I don't get this Absolutely. jurisdictional kind of thing where they, you know, just dismiss it because this person uh, doesn't work here. I hate that. That is a cop-out. And, and you hear about it time and time again. Uh, we should be grabbing on to what others are paying for or the expertise that others have that they're willing to bring here, certainly of their own accord. So any information like that should be uh, used. And there's precedent for these kinds of investigations too, of course. Uh, more than once in this province, uh, groups of workers have been studied to determine whether or not uh, their uh, you know, place of employment is uh, inherently damaging to their health. Absolutely, and, and I think we've seen that in the, with the St. Lawrence, Saint Lawrence Island, for yeah. example, mm-hmm. that they, sure. they've done that. Yep. And all the workers are, and families are asking for is that the same type of process be uh, be applied to them. And, you know, and, and, I, and I sat down with them and I said, look, you know, if what you're asking me, I guess, to uh, the cause you're asking me to champion and to bring forward is that, you know, we're just going to simply outright approve every claim for somebody or suggest that we would approve every claim for every individual who came down with, uh, you know, a cancer or whatever. I certainly couldn't agree to that. But, but you know, if what you're saying is that we have a fair process in place using, you know, all of the science that's available to us, using experts in the field, who can make fair determinations, and that's certainly something that I believe that all those workers are entitled to, and that's all they're asking for. They're asking for fairness. They're asking to have a process in place whereby a fair assessment can be done based on, uh, you know, uh, science and so on by people who are experts in the field, and I don't think that's too much to ask for. And uh, so, you know, they've contacted the uh, minister again, and, uh, you know, they've gotten nowhere. I've written the minister now on two occasions asking to meet with him to discuss uh, that and, and some other issues, and uh, I haven't even gotten a response to either of my correspondents, and, uh, which is very disappointing to say the least. So I guess I'm, uh, you know, all I can do now is I can raise the issue on their behalf publicly, and I will certainly be raising it in the House of Assembly as well. And I hope the Minister of Service NL or some of his people are listening and that they're going to be willing to sit down with these families who have had loved ones, some who have passed away, some who are suffering, and, uh, you know, just make sure that they're treated fairly. And that's all they want, and that's all they expect. I think that's all, I think that's reasonable for them to expect that. Who's the minister right now? Is it Mr. Hutchings? No, the Minister of Service NL is uh, Minister Cornick. Right, Tony Cornick. Um, right. And, um, he was, so, in, he was you know, in tourism for like five minutes, and now he's uh, right on. Yeah, now he's uh, moved to a new portfolio. And it's interesting uh, that you would even have to ask that. Yeah, it's hard to keep up yeah. on it, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, given the fact that we've had, uh, there are so many issues within service, and like I said, we have a statutory review, we have this issue uh, in Marystown, we have issue with silica dust out in, uh, in, in, in Lab West, um, you know, we've had these issues with the Workers' Comp Review Division and all these cases uh, that are backed up and so on, and yet we have not heard one sound, not one peep from the minister. You wouldn't even know he existed. So high time he gave the program a call. Out and start talking to the people, letting them know what he plans to do to address right these issues. Thank you, Mr. Lane. We're going to move along, but I appreciate this, and uh, perhaps we've started something here, and we can hear uh, from the minister and get some follow-up. Hopefully, we do, and uh, I'll certainly be keeping his feet to the fire, both uh, on the airways and certainly when the House Assembly opens. All right, I got back out there knocking on doors. I uh, absolutely. Thank right. you, Pete. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Okay, bye.